Okay, today we're looking at Glencoe Accelerated Math, Lesson 4-3 on Multiplying and Dividing Monomials. So, can somebody please look at page 147? On page 147, we have the pink box that says key concept, which we're going to come back to. And below that, there's a word highlighted, and that highlighted word is monomial. Can somebody please tell me what that says? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so a monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of numbers and or variables. So it means we have one number, one variable. They can be multiplied together, they can be added, subtracted. In some way, we have one number and one variable. Mono means one. Okay? So that's where the monomial, that's where the mono and monomial comes from. So knowing that we're going to be work working with one number and one variable, let's talk about the product of powers because this is in our chapter on exponents. The product of powers says that if we have the same base and two different exponents and those two quantities are being multiplied together, we can keep the base and we add the exponents. Let me say that again. The product of powers property, the product of powers property, okay, says that if the base is the same, doesn't matter if there's a coefficient, the base is the same, we can add the exponents if the two quantities are multiplied together. Okay? So if I had a to the fourth times a to the seventh, what's my base? A. So I keep the base at a. Then I would take, go to the four plus seven power. What's four plus seven? 11. A to the 11. That's what that prop, that's what that power tells us, what that property tells us we can do. We can take two terms and combine them into one. Okay? Questions about this so far before we move on? Alright. Do we need to see how, why this works? Well, I'm going to show you anyway. A to the fourth means what? A times A times A times A. We're multiplying that by A to the seventh, which means what? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, that's what that means. If I add up all those A's together, we get 11. We have A timed itself 11 times, which is A to the 11th power. Make sense? Yes. Okay. So, we can do the same thing with numbers as bases. Okay. Look at example 1a. We're going to do 1a and 1b. 1a says that we have 4 to the third times 4 to the fifth. Could I find 4 to the third power, multiply by 4 to the fifth, and then figure out what root it would be to get back to 4? Could I do that? Yeah. I could. Is it easier to keep the base out of the exponents? Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Okay? So, here, what are we going to do? Keep the base. What's the base? Four. We do what to the exponents? Add. Add. What's three plus five? Four to the eight. Could you figure out what 4 to the 8th power was at this point? Yes. Do we have to? No. No, not unless it tells you to. Okay. Now, yesterday we talked about negative exponents. 
And we said that sometimes it would be easier to work with them as a fraction making a positive, and other times it would be much easier to work with the negative. Here's where it's easier to work with the negative. Let's look at example 1b, which says that we have 6 times 6 to the negative fourth. If I don't have an exponent here, there's an invisible exponent. What's that invisible exponent going to be? Ooh, is it zero or is it one? One. One. It has an invisible exponent of one. Because remember, anything to the zero power is equal to one. So six to the zero power equals one. I need that to equal six. So it's going to be to the first power. Okay? Yes? Cool. So then this would be, I'm going to do the same thing, right? Yes? Okay. What's my base? Six. Six. What do I do to my exponents? Add this. Add them. So I'm going to have one plus negative four. What's one plus negative four? Negative three. So then I have six to the negative third power. Reviewing from yesterday, how can I write six to the negative third power using a positive exponent? Yes, sir? One, uh, one six. Um, to the negative third power, or third power. Okay. One over six to the third. <coughs> Bless you. All of these statements mean the same thing. Every one of these statements means the same thing. I didn't add any value. I didn't subtract any value. I'm simply rewriting it in a different way. Okay. All right, any questions about this? No, we're good to go? Cool. Turn to page 148. 148. Because we need to look at example three. Example three. In example three, do you guys want to do three A or three B? Three A. Three A. Okay. Read three A for me, please. To the third. Do I have it right? Two X to the third power times eight X to the fourth power. Okay. Ooh. Ooh! Guess what? Do I just... Do I have just a base and an exponent on this side? No. 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 What do I have in front of those bases? Variables. Numbers. Mm -hmm. I have numbers. I said it numbers. Those numbers we call coefficients. So, with the base and the exponent, we added the exponents and we kept the base, correct? Yeah. What do you think we're going to do with the coefficients? We're going to add them together. We're going Did you, did somebody say ignore them? Yeah, ignore them. That would be really nice, but we can't do that, okay? We, we are going to multiply our coefficients. So let me make a note over here. We're multiplying the coefficients. So this means that we have 2 times 8 times x to the 3 plus 4. And that will be our answer. What is 2 times 8? 16. We keep our x, which is our base. What's 3 plus 4? 7. 7. So if we have... 2x to the third times 8x to the fourth, we can simplify that to be 16x to the seventh.
What questions do we have? None? Okay. Now, in these problems, we multiplied and we added, and we this property was called the product of powers, correct? Okay. If we look at the bottom of, of page 148, it says the quotient of powers. What operation do we have with the quotient? Division. What would be the partner of division then? Subtraction. Subtraction. So if the product of powers told us to multiply the coefficients and add the exponents, what do you think the quotient of powers property would tell us to do? What do you think the quotient of properties what do you think the quotient of powers property would tell us to do? And subtract. Alright? I'm going to change colors on us. If we had and I'll use black. Let's say that I had a to the fourth divided by a to the seventh. Okay, and I'm going to write it in the form of a fraction. A to the fourth means what? Okay. We're going to divide it by what's a to the seventh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay. Our, our rules of division say that I can simplify and I can cancel out things that are the same in my numerator and my denominator, correct? So I can cancel, 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 count, cancel. And I would be left with 1 over a times a times a? Or a times... Which would be 1 over... A3. A to the third, yeah. which equals 1... Or a cubed. A to the negative 3, correct? Uh -huh. Okay. Could I also say <coughs> a to the 4 minus 7, which equals a to the negative third? Because we would KCA this and get negative 3? Yeah. So, when we are dividing, we are going to keep our base and we subtract the exponents. If we look on page 149, if I had 8 to the 5th, this is example 4a, 8 to the 5th divided by 8 to the 3rd. What's my base? 8. What do I do to my exponents? I'm going to subtract 5 minus 3. And when we subtract, it's numerator divide minus denominator. Okay? What's 5 minus 3? 2. So that would be 8 squared is the final answer? Yes? No, maybe? Yes? Fantastical. Okay. problem where we have a coefficient, but we're going to do one, just to make sure that we know what to do, if we would see one, okay? So, I'm going to call this a Mrs. Blum example. I need a base. Yes, sir. Four. Four is our base, okay? I, I need a number. Actually, can we have a, a base of 4 with an exponent? Yeah. 
Or with the coefficient? No, so instead we'll make one of our coefficients four. And so I need a variable as a base. B, okay? Four B. Put B here. What are we going to divide four by? I heard somebody say two. Okay. And I need a number for an exponent. Yes, sir? Thirteen. Thirteen? And a number for an exponent? Seven. Seven. Okay. I am going to divide my coefficients. So I'm going to take 4 over 2 times. My base is what? What's my base? B. What do I do with my exponents? Yeah, right, I'm subtracting. This is the quotient of property, quotient of power's property. 13 minus 7. Okay. What is 4 divided by 2? <laughs> Keep my base of B. 2B to 6 power. 13 minus 7 is? 6. 2B to the 6th. Okay. What questions do we have? None. We're good to go. Fantastic. Thank you very much.